Hey everyone, Minasan Konnichiwa for my Japanese viewers. And today we are setting up a product shot. And so I've already got my objects loaded and they're sitting on the ground. So we can see if we look at the back view here, you can see they're right along the zero line. Let's go back to the camera view. And so if I turn on VPR, you can see we get just a plain black background, solid shadows, not really very interesting to look at. So let's set it up so we get a nice view we can show to clients or use in like a magazine ad or even use it on a TV commercial, which I've done. These are a couple of products that I made for a commercial for a client a few months ago. So let's go up first and make a ground plane. Click the modeler tools and geometry and ground plane and so 10 meters should be fine for an object of this size this is actual size and click OK and you can see it's quite large but just in case uh, let's look at the top view and I'm going to press T for move although it's already selected on translate and let's just drag it back here so it's under the camera but still we have plenty of space back there let's go back to our camera view and you can see there's plenty of room back there and again if you look at VPR you can see we have our ground but there's a real harsh edge back there we'll work on that later the first thing we're going to be doing here is giving a nice little subtle reflection on the ground and select our ground plane in the surface editor and just give it a little bit of reflection like say I don't know 15 percent now anytime you're adding reflection you're gonna want to reduce the diffuse and it's best to have the diffuse and the reflection add up to 100 percent so that means the diffuse will come down to about 85 percent Okay, we'll close that and let's go on to our light and let's reduce this uh, ambient intensity just all the way down to zero we don't need that and let's change it to a dome light and so now it's really soft I like to have a little bit of a shadow in there so let's reduce the angle down to about 12 percent or so Let's drag that all the way down yeah, something like that so now we've got a little bit of a shadow in there but it, it still fades off so it's nice looking okay so now let's update this backdrop so it's not that ugly black so we'll go into windows and backdrop options and in the backdrop color here we have RGB but you can right click on any of these and it'll switch to hue saturation of value so you can just drag the value up I don't know, somewhere around there now we can close that and let's go over to render and render globals we actually already have that open switch over to the global illumination tab and enable radiosity now that is nicely brightly lit and it's really looking better already so now let's go up to windows and volumetrics and fog options which is actually the same tab same window we already had open uh, for the backdrop just a different tab and so let's set fog type to realistic and we need to adjust our minimum and maximum distance and so the way to, to do that to tell how far to set that is let's turn off VPR for a minute put it on front face wireframe and let's look at the top and we'll Oops, get the camera selected and we'll zoom in on that and 
And so let's see, down here we can see the grid is 50 millimeters. So you can really count how, how many grid spaces there are. Or to make it easier, you can use the square brackets to change the grid size. So that's one meter now. Oh, that's too much, I think. So let's go back a little bit. Set it to 100 millimeters, for example. So now we can see that it's roughly 300 millimeters from the camera to the box and the cup. So really we want our fog to start behind the box. So, I don't know, say around 350 millimeters. So just drag that up. Yeah, somewhere around there. And then the maximum you can see can go way back just our square brackets on the keyboard again. We go up to one meter. Now we can see it's around 10 meters. Let's drag that maximum up. Somewhere around there. Okay, let's go back to the camera view. And we can see this is getting clipped it's because of uh, adjusting that grid size. So let's bring it back down. Now it's much nicer looking. So let's turn the VPR back on. And we can see our fog is starting to cut off that edge a little bit, smooth it out. But it's a little bit much, so let's bring that max distance back down. And it's working, but we still see that edge there. So what we can do is change the fog color to match that background. So just click the swatch there. And we're going to pick, pick from screen. And then just select up there. And click OK. And now we've got a nice transition from that background all the way down here to our box. And it's a little bit bright, so I think I'm going to bring the light intensity down a little bit. And that should pretty much do it. Let's do a quick F9 render and see how it looks. There we go. So that looks pretty good, but there's still a little bit of grain in that shadow. So I might want to open up the camera properties and we'll just bring up these a little bit higher. And I like to set this on Gaussian Sharp. Or excuse me, I like to set this on Mitchell Sharp. And let's get another F9 render. This one will take a little bit longer. Okay, here we go, it's speeding up now. And there we go. It's a great shot. This will look good in any kind of magazine or just displaying your objects on your website. And remember, you know, because you've already set this scene up, you can easily just replace these objects with other objects. And you can have a whole set of different objects with this great background. Okay, and so if you are gonna save this scene, Remember, you're going to have to save out that ground plane because it's not actually a real file right now. So let's get this back to front face wireframe for now. And so you'll have to go in and let's close this. You have to select your ground plane object and then file, save, 
and save current object. And so I don't, I'm not going to do that for the tutorial, but just so you know, that's how it goes. And so that's it. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to see more like this. And I am on Patreon, so there's a link to that in the description. If you want to help out this channel, please be sure, donate a dollar or something, get me a cup of coffee. Thanks. See you next time.